I want to take you back to a simpler time, 2022. The NFL draft, or better known as the draft where no one liked the quarterbacks. And I want to look at what were my initial grades coming out of that class. So without further ado, let's go ahead, get into this sucker. Start with the Arizona Cardinals. And you might probably better remember this class because I was like, oh man, they didn't have a first round pick. Well, they traded out of the first, or they traded their first round pick essentially to acquire a third and Hollywood Brown, who's now has signed with the Chiefs this offseason. And the only thing they have acquired in this draft really is Trey McBride. Sure, Cameron Thomas is with the squad, but he's depth at this point. Trey McBride, borderline top 10 quarterback, uh, or at least headed in that direction. It's easily their best pick in this class. Myja Sanders, no longer with the squad. You got uh, Keontae Ingram, who was usurped last year by uh, Emicado, uh, the former TCU run back. He was a UDFA in 2023. And ultimately, I gave that draft class a B minus. This was back when I was giving out pluses and minuses. And I think it's safe to say, ah, <laughs> ah this class ended up not being that good for the Cardinals. So I'm happy that I wasn't nearly that high on this class, but hey man, let, let's see some of the grades that I, I gave to the other teams on this list. As now I think we jump to the Atlanta Falcons, which I gave them an A, not an A plus. I did like the Ebiketti pick at the time. And I mean, he just hasn't broken out yet. Troy Anderson was beat up this year. So they still kind of don't know what they got in him. I thought Desmond Ritter was pretty good value in the third. Ends up, you know, not being your guy. But that's fine. Taking a shot on a quarterback in the third round is a okay Drake London, uh, who we haven't spoken about yet, ends up being a really good pick. It's just the quarterback situation has been pee-pee-poo-poo -poo for them. Uh, they do get Tyler Algier. This was, uh, I believe... Arthur Smith's first draft class, right? Can't recall, but yeah, I mean, they, they you probably walk away. I mean, D'Angelo Malone's still with the squad, but what is he doing? I mean, you know, you at least you got potential wide receiver one. Uh, you have a very good running back depth in Algier, who you got in the fifth, by the way, and then you would go on to draft Bijan in the first, in the top ten, let alone. But then uh, Ebiketti, Anderson, still waiting for those guys to break out. Obviously, the A grade probably wouldn't stand right now. I think, I mean, really, I mean, a lot of this draft depends on what happens with their second round picks in Anderson and Ebiketti. Will those guys emerge this year under Raheem Morris? But I don't know, man. I don't know what I'd give it now. Probably closer to B, but yeah. I don't know. We'll find out with Atlanta. We'll find out. I gave an A- minus to the Carolina Panthers. Woof. Woof, 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 man. Things have not worked out with this draft class. I mean, they didn't have a lot of picks. Matt Corral, whoa. He's gone. He's gone. I, so many people thought he was the best quarterback in this class. Fun fact, I don't think there was really a best quarterback in this class. You can make an argument for, like, Sam Howe or Kenny Pickett. But even then, it's like... Are we really going to argue about those guys? Let's just say there wasn't like a top 15 quarterback in this class, like top 15 in the league. Ken McWanu kind of had a sophomore slump this season. I'm expecting him to bounce back. Brandon Smith, I, I liked Brandon Smith. I mean, he was a guy that was just an athletic marvel, still learning the position. Uh, I don't even know if he's still on the squad anymore. I guess I could check that out. Uh, let's go to our lads. But I mean, I, I thought like he was he was someone you weren't really going to know what you had until year like three or four. I don't even, I'm pretty sure he's like elsewhere now. Let's see. Yep, not on the roster. Kind of sucks it is what it is. Uh, yeah, they got uh, Amaro or Mari Barno, who I do think is still with the squad potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's now just stuck behind guys like Clowney came in, Chase on, won him. They did draft DJ Johnson ugh, last year in the third round. Moved up to get him. Didn't really like that pick. Uh, and then Kate Mays probably ends up being the second best player 
in this draft class. Who they got in the sixth round will be competing potentially at that center position. Better on um Austin Corbett. Can he come back healthy? I don't know. That'll be it'll be fascinating nonetheless. But I mean, you the more you look at this draft, the more you're like, ugh. Real quick, I got a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I love Underdog Fantasy. It's why I've been a partner with them for so long now. And if you sign up using promo code BROSHMO, they got up to $250 in bonus cash for you. Just because the football season's over doesn't mean your betting season is over. You can do a weekly best ball with baseball, basketball, and such. You can do higher and lower on player prop bets. So go ahead, check out Underdog Fantasy. And if you do sign up, use promo code ABROSHMO to take advantage of that offer. But please, bet smartly, because that's a word. Bet wisely, bet responsibly. Back to the video. This is more like a C minus, borderline D. Kind of hoping Ken McWanu bounces back. All right. Well, we got the Bears next, I believe. Bears, I gave a. B minus. Uh, I'm kind of curious what I what I had to say about this, so I'm actually gonna go back and listen. Let's. I ended up giving it a B minus. Why? Why? I like the players that they took, because uh, they took a lot of them, as we can see. They took a lot of them. Uh, I I wasn't in love with necessarily the players that they drafted. <laughs> I really, listen, I, I really like Kyler Gordon. Jaquan Brisker, both were very good values. Okay. Both both are gonna be very good players in the secondary. However, and they are. I would figure you would come in this draft with the strategy, hey, let's get our boy, Justin Fields, some help. You'd be like, well, they got Valus Jones. I think okay. he's a return man. Yeah, he's a deep field speedster. He's also 25. I didn't like that pick there in the third round. There were, uh, I think there were better Still receivers not a good on the pick. board. So I wasn't a fan. Braxton Jones, he's he's a developmental tackle. He's not someone that can help right away. Zachary <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Yo, I, I actually, I was more so curious what I thought about Braxton Jones. And I mean, yeah, I thought he was a developmental guy coming out of Southern Utah. He had the length, but I mean, got on the field early, real early, and honestly got by with them tools. Like, ends up being one of their better picks in this draft class. I mean, you look at the remainder of it, and who's even still on the roster? Is uh, Hicks still there? I know Hicks. I think he is. Solid special teamer and good uh, backup player. Uh, backup safety. Where, where are the Bears at? Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's still there, and I mean, yeah, I mean, that's your safety three. That's not bad. He's going to be competing there with Jonathan Owens. So, yeah, B minus. Ah, I'm glad I'm glad I didn't love it because, I, yeah, I mean, some of the shots they took late day three. I mean, you got to take shots on some of these guys, right? None of them quite worked out. Hicks ends up being their better player, but... Gordon, Brisker, Jones end up being good players for this squad. Uh, Dominic Robinson's just struggling to develop, struggling to see the field. So I don't mind the B minus grade. Obviously, it's worse. Uh, is it a little worse now? It might be a little. It might be in that B B minus range. I ain't gonna get too mad about that. Okay, let's uh, jump to. This is the Dallas Cowboys. I loved this draft. I loved this draft. A minus. I liked the Tyler Smith pick. I called the Tyler Smith pick. And I kind of figured he would end up being a guard there. Plays tackle his rookie year. Plays well. Kick him in, back into guard and does super well there. Like, ends up being a really good pick for him. I liked the Sam Williams pick. I thought he was a good fit for the defense. And even though he's been more of a rotation player there for him, he's still been solid. Jalen Tolbert, I know I was, I was higher on during the draft process. And I kind of wish he had a better week in Mobile. Kind of is what it is. He hasn't really emerged for the squad. But golly, Jake Ferguson. Golly, Deron Bland. Golly, Damon or Damone Clark. And Clark, he fell a big reason because of, uh, I think, was it a spinal injury he had or a vertebrae? 
something along those lines, and he's ended up being a good starter for him. Deron Bland, shoot, he had, what, eight pick sixes this past season, showed he could work inside and outside, and Ferguson's developed into a really, really good tight end. Yeah, this is a good class. If anything, I'd bump it up. They did a hell of a job getting value from these guys. Uh, let me see if I scroll down, because I think they had other picks. Yeah, okay, their other picks were kind of big nothing. Devin Harper, uh, John Ridgeway. John Ridgeway, I believe, bounced around. I think it was with the Commanders for a little bit. Okay, let's move on to uh, the Packers. No, Detroit Lions. I gave it an A. Of course I did. Of course I gave the Lions an A. This was a good draft class. I loved Jameson Williams. I didn't mind them moving up to go get him. I was a big Aiden Hutchinson fan. Yeah, I think he was my top player in that draft. Uh, yeah, Josh Pascal, I was kind of like whatever about. Uh, and he ends up being really just kind of an early down run stuffer at the edge position. I liked Kirby Joseph. It's good to see that he's kind of come become this big like ball hawk. Uh, though can be burned here or there. I really loved James Mitchell. And I think he's been kind of a quality tight end depth, at least at this point. I mean, you get him in the fifth. I think that's solid. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. I don't think I was that high on, but I liked him in this range. I saw some people have him like third, fourth round. I think I was more mid day three with him. I mean, sure, what am I doing? I could, I could literally go look at what, what grades I had on these guys. Yeah, Malcolm Rodriguez. I had a fifth round grade on him. Uh, I was a big fan of James Houston. They took him in the sixth. I had him with a mid, uh, like a mid um, day three grade, but I had position change because he was listed as a uh, off ball linebacker and i thought he'd probably be kind of a dpr just freaky wingspan and they've got a good value out of him obviously his rookie year last year he was a little banged up uh chase lucas i think is bouncing around the league at this point as kind of a, just a special teamer don't quote me on that but no this was a good class man this was a good class like jameson williams yeah you kind of wish you got more from him we'll see we'll see in year two we'll see move on now to the green bay packers who i gave the packers a solid b plus uh, i thought the quay walker pick was a little early i had quay as linebacker six with a top 50 grade though but no i liked Devonte uh wyatt quite a bit that was about the range yeah i thought they could probably get him in oh i had him top 20 actually uh, you had Christian Watson, who I had a second round grade on. They move up. I mean, what, didn't they trade an extra second rounder to move up to go get him? And honestly, he went on the field. He's been he's been solid enough for them. Like Romeo Dubs ends up being um, really good value with him. I mean, what what where was he at? I had him as receiver 18, fourth round pick. To get him in the fourth round. Ends up being good value. Zach Tom ended up being a steal. Actually, some some of the parts of this class ends up being a lot better than, than I thought. Like, I think Ture is still with the squad. He's just kind of like looming as depth. I know Packers fans really like him. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, he's still with the squad. Rashid Walker kind of became a starter there at left tackle. Kind of curious to see how uh, it... I mean, I guess, I guess the question is, what are they going to do with Jordan Morgan? Are they going to play him at guard early? Or is it going to be a left tackle? I haven't quite really started deep diving um, into each NFL team, at least in terms of for my deep dive series, which I do over the summer. Specifically, what are like uh, some of the rumors coming out of training camp and who's going to start where and whatnot. Uh, right now... They got Rashid Walker over at right tackle on our lads. That's that's interesting. But are they going to kick Zach Tom into center? I mean, regardless, Zach Tom's been really good for them. Uh, Kinsley and Agbari, unfortunately, was hurt this year, but he showed promise his rookie year. Uh, Sean Ryan was someone I actually liked quite a bit, kind of uh, as a guard, though. Oh, really, as a tackle. Let's see where I listed him at. Yeah, I listed him as a guard. Uh, he was a third-round prospect to me. 
I uh, had him as interior eight in this class. Uh, I think last, it was either last season or year, be year before, he was suspended for a little bit for like PEDs or something. But I might bump this grade up a little bit because I don't think they reached terribly on Quay Walker. And he's been a solid player. Like, I mean, I think he's just kind of the, this is another reason why you probably shouldn't take linebacker in the first round. These guys take a little bit to develop, but I don't know. It's kind of fascinating. All right, let's move on. Oh, I hated this, this draft. Oh, this was the Rams. Yikes. Uh, wow, I think this class is actually... <laughs> I'm now looking at it. I think it's a little bit better uh, than I gave it credit for. Uh, Darian, Kend uh, like Darian Kendrick, not a great starter, but they got a quality player for depth. Russ Yeast is one of my least favorite starters at safety, but to be able to get that uh, type of production from him is pretty solid. I think he's probably, anyway, better as a uh, uh, a depth player. Uh, Quinnen Lake ends up being probably my favorite pick in this class as he, he really showed out at slot this past season so good on him where where did i have him in my safety rankings this was before i um made a like position like a positional rankings for the slot uh quinton lake was safety 15 fifth round grade so not bad kyron williams admittedly wasn't that high on where was kyron williams uh he was uh fifth round grade ends up going to the fifth round actually Adam is running back 12 in this class with Zamir White right ahead of him. And the big problem I had with Z uh, with uh, Kyron Williams was like I liked the receiving upside. He had really good, uh, really good vision. But, like his testing really wasn't all that great. And with smaller backs, like I've been burnt in the past by like falling in love with smaller backs. For them to be test out just not as athletic as you need to be for a smaller back uh, i think i even mentioned it this year when it came to bucky irvin was like like you really need to have like pristine vision if you're gonna make it just as an adequate athlete being a smaller back and williams has done that uh, unfortunately you know blake quorum comes in kind of a similar role but more as a runner i think williams more as a receiving back um, or at least he, he's a much better receiver than Coram, but Coram gives him that bang in the red zone and the goal line uh, for, for being a smaller back. Uh, Dakobe Durant, didn't really mention him uh, a bit. Uh, where do they got him lining up? Is he going to be outside? Is he going to be in the slot? I think he'd probably do either or. Uh, looks like they're going to have him as an outside receiver trying to contend with... Uh, uh, White and Darius Williams. Uh, so really, he's just like competing for a depth spot. So both him and Kendrick end up being like solid depth guys. Uh, Logan Bruss ends up just being a big bust. I actually liked Bruss, but I didn't like him that early. I think. Let me see. Where did I had? Where did I have uh, Logan Bruss? Out of Wisconsin. Out of Wisconsin. Oh, I know I didn't list him as a tackle. I don't see him initially. Oh, yeah, I did. He was tackle 18 for me with a six-round grade. So, yeah, that was kind of a big butt. I think I remember, like, kind of freaking out about that pick at the time. Yeah, this ends up being kind of a better-than-you-would-expect draft after you get past Logan Bruss. Like, Durant, Kendrick, they're going to be good depth. Quinn Lakes a very, like, emerged as a really good slot player last year. Yeast. I may not love him as a starter, but ain't no denying he he would be good depth as long as he's not the starter. We'll see what if Cameron Kitchens can take that role. They do have Jason Taylor there as well, uh, and then again, yeah, Kyron Williams just kind of like being wrong on that. Next team we got Minnesota Vikings gave them a B, and golly, this class is so much worse than that. So looking at the safety class, Lewis seen. Uh, I was a little bit higher on him than the general consensus. That's on me. Uh, ends up a guy that can't even see the field. You could say the same thing about Andrew Booth. Shoot, Booth was, what, corner six for me. And I had, oh, golly, dude. 
just those two guys can't see the field. They end up looking like big busts. Ed Ingram, honestly, not trending in a great direction either. Ed Ingram, I had as a fourth round uh, grade. They take him in the second. And he doesn't really look like he's really gotten better since his rookie season. I don't know, man. Maybe it clicks for him in year three. Brian Osamoa, I love that pick at the time. Can't see the field. Like straight up, like a Kayla um, or uh, Caleb Evans ends up being their probably their best pick. If we're gonna be honest. Like Ty Chandler really hasn't been able to do nothing. I forgot that they even drafted uh, veteran Low, who was a starter at the beginning of the year for the Patriots. Not that he's been that good, but it's okay depth. Jalen Naylor's still with the squad, but they might have an okay starting corner in Evans. Yeah, this trap. Th th I was gonna say this trash class, and yes, it is. This draft class is trash. It's a trash class. It's not good here for the uh, Vikings. Keep moving. Because now I move on to the New Orleans Saints, and I gave them a C plus. Ooh, I'm kind of curious why. I mean, because like Chris Olave, Alante Taylor ends up being like solid picks there one i didn't entirely love i ended up giving it a c plus i don't mind hey go out and get your guy and it ended up being chris olave and rooney he did what he did he he threw a lot of draft picks to go up and get his guy like the threw away uh, I, I don't want to say threw away because chris olave is a hell of a prospect but he like ended up giving up nine uh 16 and then 98 and 120 so Again, a lot of substantial draft picks to move up there to get Chris Olave. And then Trevor Pennon, I, uh, he felt like he, he was going to be the move. That I really thought that they moved ahead of the Chargers really to ensure that they would get a tackle. And I thought it would have been Trevor Pennon. It ended up being that guy that they got anyway at 19. So good on y'all. I think that was fine. Uh, outside of the trade that I didn't love, I thought it was, it was, it was all right. But then they go get Alante Taylor, who's a player, a prospect I love during this process. I had a early fourth round grade on him, and they take him in the mid mid second. It was just bad value. It was just it was just bad value, okay, and that's, that's what fair. really with bad value. And I mean, is is he even going to be the starter this year? I know he was playing a lot in the slot. Uh, yeah, they got him listed as the slot starter. Uh, but I mean, also the Honey Badger does kick inside time and time again they brought in will harris yeah no he's gonna be the start of the slot so yeah Tre trevor penn ends up being the, like the big bus there but i mean they move up to get olave like you know lobby is hella good so yeah i guess the c plus is kind of all right it's kind of all right now we're moving on to the giants oh, i imagine this is like an a plus for me oh i talked quite a bit about oh did i not I gave it a B minus, <gasps> but I loved what they did early on. May I think, okay, I think I know what happened. I'm looking at like this day two and you could argue there were some reaches. Wandale Robinson, I think I had probably more of a third, fourth round grade on him. Fourth round grade on him. You look at uh, Joshua as a new, uh, see where he ended up being for me as a fifth round prospect so okay taking some reaches taking some shots cordero flot who honestly could end up being the better i don't know Ron, wandale's wandale's made some plays he's made some plays but uh when it comes to uh flot where did i have flot yeah he was a fifth round grade for me Thought he might have been stuck in the slot just because of his size, but he's also young and he could put on more weight. So, uh, I mean, obviously Evan Neal is kind of the big, oh, is he going to, is he just a bust? Kind of feels that way, unfortunately. Kind of hoping maybe things click for him because I really liked Evan Neal. Uh, KD Thibodeau ends up being a, a good pick. Now he's going to be next to Brian Burns. That's just going to be nuts. Daniel Bellinger ends up being a really solid pick for them. Uh, did Darren Waller already retire? The squad has, has he made that official? I know the poor guy is going through a divorce, but 
Now he's still listed on the team, so. But I think Bellinger is actually a pretty good uh, backup tight end too. Uh, Dane Belton. I don't think I was exceptionally high, but this sounds like the range. I had a six round grade on him. He's really been uh, uh, more of a depth player there for the Giants. Um, not pro probably not going to be the starter there. They got uh, Pinnock, Jason Pinnock, who I really liked. Uh, was he in this draft class too? Or was he in the draft class before? And I think he was a corner. Yeah, let's just control F this sucker. Alright, yeah, I think he was the 2021 draft class. Yeah, I don't see him. Okay. I actually liked Panak coming out. I was late to this tape. And then they drafted Tyler Newbin, ends up being the first safety off the board. Jalen Mills they bring in, who he's a guy that's just constantly seen the field. I don't think he's that good, but again, and I he constantly sees the field. Uh, Micah McFadden ends up being a pretty solid pick late here. Uh, DJ Davidson, unfortunately, hurt, but he's been depth. Marcus uh, McKeithen, I think he got hurt this year as well, but he, he's really just a depth. But yeah, I mean. I don't know, man. I think the B minus grade kind of still stands better on what goes on with like Evan Neal and these day two picks. Interesting. Ooh, I gave an A to the Philadelphia Eagles. I loved the Jordan Davis pick. I liked Cameron Jurgens. I'm pretty sure I loved the Nicobe Dean. Unfortunately, he can't stay healthy. And it didn't really matter what they did with their six round picks. I'm kind of curious as. Aaron Johnson still on the squad. He was, I think, a bit undersized, like a 240-pound edge rusher coming out of uh, Kansas there. Okay, let's see. I know uh, Grant Calicatera is still with the squad. He's listed as their tight end, too. Uh, Kyron Johnson. They got Patrick Johnson here. Wasn't he with... Uh, was he with the Commanders, or did he end up being a UDFA? Uh... I don't see Kyron Johnson. I mean, there is a lot. They have a lot of edge rushers on this squad. Yeah, I don't I don't see him. So yeah, no longer with the team. Again, there's six round picks. I don't really care. But Jordan Davis ends up being uh, really solid for him. And now he gets to play like a true nose tackle. I'm assuming Vic Fangio is going to be playing more of those uh, odd fronts. You got Cam, uh, Cam Jurgens, the Beef Jurgens, who is i think moving probably moving to center this year that was kind of the plan but he played really good at right guard this past season so i mean i i don't disagree like it'd be nice if nicobe dean could stay healthy and be good for them but you kind of knew that that injuries were going to be an issue with him all right now we move on to the seattle seahawks Yep, and I gave that an A. I liked the Charles Cross pick. Uh, unfortunately, it was a little banged up last year, so kind of hoping he comes back and he keeps continues to develop. I love the Abraham Lucas pick. Injury really screwed him this year. I don't know if he's going to be able to like come back and be that right tackle for them that they need. Uh, I do believe, didn't they go out and get a little bit of help no they brought in george fan that's fine uh they got christian christian haynes in this past draft that's right that was a good pick uh boy mafe starting to emerge man we knew he had a lot of traits and it started clicking in his final year not clicking but you could tell he was starting to clean up and become more technically sound as a pass rusher but he was someone that had a lot of traits a lot of tools was on the older side i think he was like 24 uh, entering his rookie year, um, uh, 23. Okay, so not as old. But, yeah, man, he, he, he he's starting to emerge for them. Kenneth Walker ends up being a really good pick. Then they grab <laughs> Zach Charbonnet the following year. Shocks everybody. Kobe Bryant, man. A lot of people thought he was going to remain and stick on the outside there or kick into the slot. And now he's just kind of like safety depth for them. Uh, they grabbed... Oh, I really liked Tyreek Smith coming out of Ohio State. 
but I kind of knew he wouldn't be anything more than a depth player, and I, I don't even know if he's still on the roster here. Uh, I don't see him. Kind of is what it is, but Tyreek Wolin, man, I was a lot higher on on Wolin than than this. He ends up going to the fifth, and I thought that was wild. Uh, when it came to Tyreek Wolin, he was corner ten for me. I had a third round grade on him. Uh, I know this year was a little up and down for him, but I, I mean, he produced exceptionally well his rookie year. Hopefully, you can get back to that. Bo Melton is now, I think, with the Packers. I think he's with the Packers now. Ooh, uh, direct, uh, what is it? Darik uh, Young, the wide receiver of Lenore Ryan. It's been a pretty solid special teamer. Like, Low key, Seattle knows how to draft special teamers. Like, they kind of do. Because yeah, just this uh, last draft, not 2024, but 2023, they grabbed Jarek. Uh, is it Reed? The safety out of New Mexico State or New Mexico? I can't remember, but he was freaking phenomenal until he got banged up. But yeah, this is a really good class by the Seahawks. Like, even, even if like Abraham Lucas can't come bounce back if you hit on one of those tackles you feel really good you got a really good running back uh, an edge player that's starting to emerge is really really nice you grabbed uh, a starting caliber corner here in the fifth round a good special teamer late so yeah i, I like this draft class for them oh san francisco 49ers i hated san france class and fun fact i think history is gonna shine on me for that their best player ends up being brock purdy straight up i like I, I didn't mind mr irrelevant i wonder if i even mentioned brock purdy Ooh, let's talk brock purdy uh, i like uh, i'm curious what i said about brock Purdy. Draft strategy of the nine game published corner i know on i to i know i san francisco 49 I know I crap on the Steiner's draft. I'm just going to say that. Steiner's. I, I understand the strategy. I'll say that. I understand the draft strategy of the Niners, but I gave it a C plus. That Drake Jackson pick was phenomenal. It was. He's probably going to be I the mean, D Ford guy. Uh, I mean, he hasn't really done anything yet. He's just kind of in the rotation, but I mean, that's the Niners. They love their defensive line rotation. That's fine. That's fine. It is what it is. Uh, now he's going to be competing with uh, Yatir Gross Matos, uh, or Gross Matos, however you say it, uh, for Edge 3. Uh, I really league. think that he's going to end up replacing D Ford on that defensive line. And Yo, straight up, I didn't even know D Ford was still on the roster. It feels like he is so long ago. That's wild. Really, with Drake Jackson, his high end reps could rival that of some of the top prospects in this class. It's just when it comes to him, consistency, consistency was a concern. I understand that Davis Price at running back is a body type that they don't currently have at running back. I thought it was still a dog water pick. And fun fact it was, is he even on the roster anymore? Oh look, no he isn't. This was a team that proved that they could draft or even not draft, just bring in guys later on or draft running back late day three and hit on those guys because the offensive line typically is in phenomenal shape. They did it with Elijah Mitchell in 2021. And yeah, he ends up now not even being on the squad anymore. Let me just confirm. I don't, I don't see him on the roster page here. So yeah. A team that has proven that they don't need to invest highly in the running back position. And they went out and they reached for a running back. I think he was RB 16 or 17 on my board. Uh, Danny Gray went a little higher than I than I probably would have taken him. I really like Danny Gray going in, but like he ended up measuring way smaller than I anticipated. Uh, and then there are legit ball skill issues, but I understand why the why they took him. He's a good vertical threat. Six round grade on him, by the way. Spencer Burford is a good scheme fit for the offensive line. Uh, so I understand that. So it's like, I understand a lot of these picks. It's just, they weren't great value outside of Drake Jackson. And you could even argue uh, Tariq Castro Fields, which they've been going in on a lot of these press guys. I mean, Char Charvarius Ward, he's a press guy. Uh, 
was it Ambry Thomas coming out? Of oh yeah, coming out of Michigan. He was a press guy. Michigan. So watch out for that. Yeah, but yeah, outside of that, like I liked say okay, listen, Samuel Womack was a guy I liked. He was in my underrated list. But I thought he was firmly at like a late day three, maybe UD, uh, priority UDFA. That was a bit of a shocking pick there. It was terrible. Still with the still with the roster, by the way. Full value. I mean, that, that's just this draft. They had a draft strategy. They executed it. It just that it just it was terrible value. But it is what it is. I felt like it, it was pretty average. Brock Purdy was kind of funny, making him Mr. Elephant nothing could be further from the truth but drake jackson was a hell of a pick keep in mind this team didn't have a first nothing could be further from the truth okay so i'm just assuming based on that comment that i liked brock purdy i did like brock purdy though uh let me take a look what was my grade on him i had brock purdy fifth round grade okay hey straight up nobody had high grades on brock purdy there might have been one or two out there i don't know who they are hey if you did Awesome. I loved Brock Purdy early on. His first two years uh, at Iowa State was dope. Uh, then there, there were a little bit of struggles. There was also just a lack of talent here and there at Iowa State. But, dude, yeah. I mean, he ends up just being a guy that comes out of nowhere. But, yeah, C+. Plus, like, literally, the only player they hit on might be... I don't, I don't want to... Like, Drake Jackson's nice and all, but it's like, he's currently your edge three. Burford benched benched that's why they i mean well they bring in now dominic pooney this year but they also got uh uh feliciano feliciano there we go uh who kind of replaced him in the lineup last year and just outplayed him so yeah i mean they they, they legit got nothing outside of brock Purdy in this draft okay this is the tampa bay buccaneers and we got logan hall I thought that I think that was probably a little bit of a reach for me. I had him as as a third round grade. Uh, I think I probably liked Gadecki, but I probably liked Gadecki as a fourth. Looking at it now, uh, where did where did I have Luke Gadecki? Did I list him as an interior player? I think I did. I did. Okay, he was a third round player. So okay, not not entirely a big reach. Uh, white white. And honestly, White and Godecki probably ends up being the best picks. We'll find out about Zion M M McCullen this year. I mean, he played a lot of snaps last year, but it was his first year as a starter. That's fine. Uh, it, hopefully, like, he can build off of last year now having that experience. But he was kind of an athletic freak coming out. Uh, they grabbed a punter. Uh, please tell me he's still with the roster. He's still their punter. He's not even their punter anymore. Was it? Marta, not even their punter anymore. Why, why, why do people draft spe like kickers and punters? I just don't get it. Go, Joe. I haven't even got to the Chiefs yet, bud. Gotta wait. We haven't even got to the AFC yet. B grade sounds pretty fair. Kate Otten's been solid for him. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be like a top 10 tight end in the league, but like... I would certainly say maybe in that top 15. Top, yeah, I'd say maybe close to that top 15 variety. Uh, Logan Hall really hasn't done much of anything. Uh, I think there's still one more team in here that I have to get to for the NFC. Oh, yeah, it's the Commanders. Oh, I did not like this draft. I did not like this draft. That's, that sucks. I really liked uh, Christian Holmes coming out. Uh, but let's talk about their draft. Jahan Dotson. Fun. One pick rough second year but to be fair there were some ups and downs at the quarterback position sam howe had a tough time doing it kind of by himself because the offensive line was kind of trash but also he would put himself in situations where it, it, he would he would have to force some throws uh Fidarian math is i said it at the time nothing but a depth piece they took him way too high brian robinson I mean, like he's gonna be splitting time with Austin Eckler this year, but Brian Robinson's been all right. Percy Butler's been played quite a bit for them. He's gonna be their starter this year probably. Cam Curl's gone, but I mean Butler's more of like that too high. Uh, guy, not not someone's gonna come down into the box consistently. 
Uh, did they draft another safety? Oh, no, no, that's right. They got uh, Derek Forrest. But they bring in Chen, and Chen, Chen's someone that, that thrives around the line of scrimmage. So... Oh, man, dude. Washington's going to be interesting. I can't wait to do their deep dive video. That's a very interesting squad there, but... But uh, Sam Howe, man, I mean, they end up training away, and I'm not going to lie to y'all, he ends up probably being the best quarterback in this class outside of Brock Purdy. Like, you got Brock Purdy, who ends up being, like, he's a top 10, top 12 quarterback in the league. That's not up for discussion. You could argue if he's top five. You could make that argument. I feel good about him being, like, a top 10, uh, maybe, like, yeah, I, I would say top 10. I... I think you, I think you can make a create a, a good argument that he's somewhere in that 10 12 range you could even argue that he's top five but no, no other quarterback in this class comes close to that now Sam Howell's over in Seattle you got Kenny Pickett who we haven't even got to he's over in um Philadelphia as a backup Cole Turner's still with the squad he's like their tight end three so is Chris Paul he hasn't been good on the field C plus I mean looking back yeah this class ain't all that great but shoot, let's jump to the AFC, man. I'm really taking my sweet time talking with this. But I like talking draft. Hopefully, y'all enjoy it, too. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, I absolutely loved their draft. I mean, they hit a home run with their first two picks. Kyle Hamilton, Tyler Linderbaum. I mean, going to my big board, those were two players I was except, exceptionally high on. Tyler Linderbaum, I constantly bring up, especially this past year, because I loved Jackson Powers Johnson so much. But I was like, I haven't felt this way about a center since Tyler Linderbaum. Linderbaum was 18 on my big board. And then I had at at eight, Kyle Hamilton. So yeah, they crushed the first round. Uh, David Ojabo, unfortunately, injuries have kind of gotten in the way. So it's like they took a shot on a guy that was super athletic. Hasn't really paid off. Travis Jones, though, they got to start to see a little bit more of what they had in Travis Jones this season or this past season. So good pick there i thought man i i had him a bit higher i think i had him as a like a top 50 grade uh let's see uh yeah i had him with the top 50 grade uh daniel file i don't know if he's gonna be any like they're hoping he could be a starter but i don't know if he's much more than that jalen armor davis i actually liked him a little bit uh did i have a third round grade on him uh no i had a fourth round grade on him so they took him right about where i had him and yeah like he's good depth he's he, like last year he stepped up a little bit when they were having injuries but i don't think he's much more than just that depth player for him uh you got I, isaiah likely and charlie collar Th those are two guys that have been very good tight end twos and tight end threes for them so like those picks uh damarian williams i don't think we've seen bit uh a lot from him he's more so gonna like can contends for that slot is he even still on the roster yeah yeah he's contending for that slot with guys like uh uh arthur mullet i mean to kyle, <laughs> kyle hamilton will kick kick it and play the slot uh you had batty here her 80 uh jordan stout please tell me he's still there hey look at that we got a fourth round putter still on the roster i like it i like it but yeah a plus dude they crushed that first first round uh, going back and looking at the Buffalo Bills, I gave it a B. I know I was a big fan of Kyir Elam. I think I had him in that 20s range. Uh, let's go and look at that. I had him at 28. He goes at 23. That's fine. It's unfortunate he's been unable to really become a starter for that squad. James Cook ends up being a pretty solid pick for them as they really started to tap into that receiving upside that he had this past season. Uh, Terrell Bernard, man, he ends up being a starter for him now. Like, you had Matt Milano go down. He's Him and Dotson stepped up, I thought, in a big way and were actually pretty solid. But he's going to be the starter there with uh, Milano, and then they're going to have, like, uh, Dorney and Williams and Edifon Lofosho as their backup. Shakir, Khalil Shakir, I really liked. I think I had a third-round grade on him. The ideal role, and I said any role. I thought this guy could play inside and out. I was a big fan of his. So, good on that. Obviously, you had the whole Matt Ariza, uh, the false allegation crap. Now he's with the, the Chiefs. Christian 
Benford has honestly outplayed his 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 draft value and projection. I think I probably had him as a UDFA. I think I actually probably liked his uh, his teammate Denzel Williams a little bit better than him. Was that his teammate? I'm trying to think, did Benford play uh, with Villanova? I think he did, right? I uh, can't find where I had him here. But he's definitely outplayed his draft grade. Uh, Luke Tanutu, uh, he, he's he's just depth at this point. Is he even still with the roster? No, he's not even with the roster anymore. But I mean, th these are late round picks. I could really give two craps about their late round picks. Uh, B, I mean, th this is the thing. Their best player probably ends up being like either... Sh you can make an argument for Benford. It's wild. They actually hit. They hit on their second, third, fifth, and then sixth round picks. Arguably, I mean, Ariza, the, the, there was different circumstances. And it ends up being Elam that doesn't end up working out. It's kind of wild. But I mean, hey, Elam, I don't know, man. Maybe he steps up. But that dude's still going to be sitting on the bench behind uh, Rasul Douglas and Benford. That's wild that your sixth rounder outperforms your first rounder that they traded up for, by the way. They traded up a spot to go get him. All right, now we got the Cincinnati Bengals. As uh, Daxton Hill was their first round pick. I liked Hill coming out now. Man, he's kind of a man without a position. I think they're moving him just to corner. I think just put this guy in the slot. Bengals, what you doing? Just put him in the slot. So I think they're going to actually have him contest uh for outside corner cam taylor Britt merged as an okay starter there pretty solid zach carter he just hasn't been good when on the field unfortunately it kind of is what it is cordell volson i mean i i didn't i didn't love him coming out he, he's been a starter there the last two years for him but he hasn't been that good he just hasn't been that good i think i listed him as a tackle because he was a tackle prospect i had a fifth round grade on him though so it's not like it was a reach or anything tyson anderson you still with the roster yeah he is but b yeah i feel i think it's pro probably closer to c volson just doesn't look like he's worked out carter doesn't look like he's worked out cam taylor Britt, you might have gotten a solid starter there and then daxon hill i mean i guess we'll see right guess we'll see uh, Cleveland Browns, I ended up giving a B. Remember, they didn't have picks because of the Deshaun Watson trade. Kind of is what it is. Uh, but I think they hit on Martin Emerson. I was a huge Martin Emerson mark uh, at this point. He was... Uh, I had a third-round grade on him. So they got they got him with value I thought was appropriate. And I think he outplayed his uh, value. The next few picks have not really worked out. <laughs> It just has it for the Browns, unfortunately. Like you look at Alex Wright, can't really get a uh, get in. Like you know, you're not working with a the starter there. You look at David Bell, he's kind of getting flushed out of this receiving core. Just is. They bring in Jerry Judy. They got Elijah Moore there, though he's kind of on a one year. They draft Cedric Tillman. They draft Jamari Thrash's past year. It just hasn't worked out. Uh, Perion Winfrey kind of like played himself out of the league. I don't even know if he's still on a roster. Cade York doesn't work out. Why are we drafting kickers and punters in the fourth? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Jermaine Ford, I had, a, I know I had a third round grade on him. I love Jermaine Ford coming out. He was running back eight for me. Oh, fourth round grade though. So just outside, probably like really like early to mid fourth round grade for me. But I was a big fan of Ford. And I mean, granted, like, he's probably like, I don't know what the return time line is going to be for Chubb. And Ford, he's not a bell cow, but I think I think he does a good enough job. Michael Woods, I think uh, injuries kind of played a big role in that. Uh, and just like kind of like screwing around with what you what you got in him. But six rounder. Uh, Isaiah Tom is Thomas even Thomas is still somehow on the roster. Okay, and then Deshaun, uh, Deshaun, uh, Dawson Deaton at a Texas Tech, uh, not on the roster anymore. But again, seven round pick. No, no whoop 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 whoop. 
Uh, but yeah, man, you probably end up your your best two picks. Martin Emerson, Jer Jerome Ford. This class ain't looking good, unfortunately, for the Browns. It's just not. Uh, I got a B plus grade for the Denver Broncos. Why did they lose their first rounder? Was th this could have been the uh, the Sean Payton trade? Was it? That was no twenty twenty three. So what happened to their first rounder? Oh, it was Russell Wilson. Ha! <laughs> it was Mr. Unlimited. Uh, but Nick Benito has been pretty solid. Still kind of feels like more like a finesse rusher. DPR. Greg Dolchage showed some, had some shine his rookie year, unfortunately. Injury this past season. Damari Mathis, he had a very promising rookie year. And it all went to the crapper this year. So now you're looking at like just a depth option. I think they went out and uh, replaced him with like a Levi Wallace. So yeah, he's depth at this point. Uh, Wuzurike is depth. Is he even still on the roster? Wasn't he suspended at the start of the year? He's not even on the roster anymore. I actually really liked him coming out. But yeah, man, can't be messing up. Montreal Washington had some flashes here and there, but kind of a guy that was kind of phased out of Sean Payton, Sean, like Sean Payton's vision for this this squad. He's no longer a part of the roster. Uh, dude, Lute Wattenberg might ends up being the starter there at center for the uh, for the Broncos this year. That's gonna be interesting. I know Matt headed in. Uh, Henningsen is still on the roster. I kind of liked him as a late day three option. Same with Hicks. I think I had a big, uh, big crush on some of these Washington prospects as late, late day three guys. Like I liked Bruss as a late day three guy. Pretty confident that I liked Hicks as well. Uh, where did I have Hicks? Uh, yeah, I had Hicks as a seventh round grade. Caesar Williams, I actually liked quite a bit. So I really liked some of these uh, Wisconsin guys late. E plus. I don't know. I, I, this is probably closer to a C now, honestly. Uh, I do think that uh, Turner Yell kind of was hurt this past season, wasn't he? I'm not confident. Don't quote me on that. You're going to find out, Water. You're going to find out real quick if you got a center or not in Wattenberg, or, or Wattenberg if you, this season. So uh, we'll find out. But yeah, B plus grade. Mm. Not feeling like it. Ooh, A minus. Who gets the A minus here? Oh, the Houston Texans. I liked what they did here. Really did. I, I, Derek Stanley, I thought was a good pick. I thought he was well worth the top 10 pick. He ends up going at pick three. He really started to emerge this season. I love the Jalen Pitry pick. I did think the Kenyon Green was a reach. I had a, still had a, I think I still had a top 50 grade on him because I was holding out hope after just an abysmal combine from him. But yeah, he was a top 50 grade still for me. Uh, I had him as interior three in this class. Unfortunately, got hurt, missed the whole season. Don't know if he's going to get a chance to even start this year. As uh, Yeah, they're probably moving Howard to left guard. Yeah, I mean, shoot, maybe. Maybe they move Howard to left guard and Blake Fisher ends up playing right tackle. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, John Mechie just really hasn't gotten the play in time. Also, if you remember, he missed that first year, I think, battling leukemia. Uh, Christian Harris really emerged down the stretch this past season. Thomas Booker's not with the squad anymore. Uh, Quintario was really just a blocking tight end. Uh, Jalen Pitre. I'm trying. I'm, I'm hoping he kind of breaks out. He's just been like fine. I don't think he's been anything more than just a fine, solid starter for the squad. But Damian Pierce ends up losing the starting job this year to Devin Singletary. I don't know what's up with that. I really liked Pierce. I, I think he was running back three for me. Yeah, running back three for me in this class. Ugh, not looking good. Not looking good, but like Steenley, Petri, Harris, those end up looking like good picks. I don't think it's still quite an A. It's probably in that B, B plus territory. Okay, here we are, Colts. I gave them an A minus. So uh, what happened with their first rounder? Uh, was that the DeForest Buckner pickup? But 
Oh man, they grabbed a lot of players that I liked. Like I, like Alec Pierce was kind of fine. I think I had a third round grade on him, so it was is what it is. Uh, Jelani Woods, I think was was he tight end one for me? No, he was tight end two. I had Trey McBride, but Woods was tight end two. Unfortunately, missed this whole season for the most part. So you still really don't know what you got in him. I think he he's coming in potentially as the starter this year. Going to be battling out with Kylan Granson, who's really just a big slot. But uh, you got Bernhard Ryman ends up being their best pick. That was one of my favorite picks. Like Bernhard Ryman for me was a he he was tackle four. I had a first round grade on him, and I feel so justified seeing this now. Uh, Nick Cross might end up being the starter this year, but he's been a good special team player for him. He's going to be battling out with Rodney Thomas, their seventh rounder. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, Ogletree, I think, played himself out of the league because of some of his off-field decisions. Uh, I liked Curtis Brooks as a late-round pickup, but I don't think he's with the squad anymore. I mean, that, there's a lot of depth on that Colts uh, team right now. Their Johnson's still there, though. But their best picks ends up, ends up being Ryman. And uh, really, that's it. Might have a starter at safety with Thomas or Cross. Uh, Jelani Woods, you're kind of hoping. Comes back well from injury. Alec Pierce is like fine receiver depth. So probably, I probably won't give it quite as good of a grade. Ooh, I really hated this next draft. Okay, oh, it was, it was the Jags and I gave them a C. Yeah, everyone was blasting the Trevon Walker pick. Bulky being bulky. He kind of emerged like a little bit, started to break out a little bit during the second half of the season, but nowhere that, n nothing that tells you like he was worth the first overall pick. Keep in mind, they they passed on Aiden Hutchinson. Golly. Devin Lloyd has really emerged this year. He, had, he, he looked really, really solid for them. Uh, They're playing next to, uh, was it Olu Kuhn? And then Luke Fortner, I, I had so many after year one. And I was talking about my first or my uh my bus or disappointed rookie seasons. And I had Luke Fortner on there because like dude gave up pressure like it was like like nobody's business. And people were like, oh, he was pretty good for a rookie center. So good that he they they went out and got his replacement in Mitch Morris. That's how good he was. Just saying, called it. I don't even think... Did I like the pick at the time? I don't think I did. Yeah, Luke Fortner did have a third-round grade, but it was like a back end of the third round. He was defensive interior 11 for me. Yeah, I didn't love it. Uh, I like Chad Muma, but right now he's just kind of sitting in his depth. Snoop Connor, you're not even on the roster anymore, are you, bud? I mean, they, they tried to they were trying they've been trying to get a good like backup for Travis Etienne. Uh, I mean, they went out got Tank Bigsby last season. This year they bring in like uh, Keelan Robinson. Yo, they got Jalen Jackson though. Let's go. Yeah, Snoop's not no longer on the roster. Uh, they got also got Gregory Jr. and Montrick Brown. I actually like the Brown pick. I think he's still with the with the team uh so is gregory jr i don't know if jr is gonna emerge they, i i think they're gonna run with darnell savage in the slot but yeah i mean their best pick ends up being just a linebacker this is kind of a dog water draft this is kind of a dog water draft i, I agree with my, my 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 past sentiment all right, Kansas City Chiefs, Gojo, I gave this, it's blurry, but I gave it a an A+. I know I really liked the uh, Trent McDuffie pickup. He was my corner three in this class. I really liked uh, George Karloftis. I thought he was more of like a top 15 pick. Not saying he, he, he's played up to being a top 15 player in this class, but like he was well worth the first rounder. Sky Moore, I loved Sky Moore. It hasn't really worked out. Kind of is what it is. Uh, Brian Cook has kind of emerged now as like the next starter at safety. 
for the Chiefs. Uh, they got him and Justin Reed. Uh, they did bring in Jaden Hicks. And honestly, like stinking Kamari Connors actually kind of played really well for them. Uh, Leo Chanel was kind of like one of the biggest steals. He was my linebacker one in this class. They get him in the third round. And he's been phenomenal for the Chiefs. Good draft in there. Joshua Williams, I think I liked him as a fourth rounder out of Fayetteville State. Yeah, I had a fourth round grade on him. A guy that uh, had the size, had the length. Uh, we'll see him as a potential, um, maybe a potential starter, honestly, next to uh, Jalen Watson, who they also got in this class. Yeah, they got Jalen Watson. Uh, dude, they, that's right. They got Pacheco in this class too. Golly, what a draft by the Chiefs! Like just looking at this, it it feels like the best draft class. They got starters and McDuffie, uh, Karloftis, Chanel does a really good job in that like Sam linebacker role. Uh, Byron Cook or Brian Cook is going to be the starter this year. Um, uh, Joshua Williams was a good special teamer, but also had some flashes. Watson's really developed into a really good player. Pachenko's off, obviously their best running back. Like, really good class by the Chiefs. Gojo, job well done, bud. Job well done. All right, I got a B minus here for the Chargers. Zion Johnson, man, he uh, straight up he did feel like a a can't miss player, right? You really, really did. Like, someone that was a, not can't miss, but a safe player. Like, he was going to develop into a good starter. And honestly, he's he's been pretty mid, unfortunately. He's been pretty mid. Jamari Sawyer's kind of developed into an okay starter there as well. Uh, they got JT Woods. Never break into the starting lineup there. Like, I thought he was going to maybe unseat. Uh, what was it? A Al Lohi Gilman. Not really. I didn't like Isaiah Spiller. So many people hated on me in this draft class for not being high on Spiller. What has he done? Nothing. Uh, Otito, man. I, I thought Otito was all right. I mean, he's he's been a big body for him, but just someone that's in the rotation there for the Chargers. Nothing more. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, Jasir Taylor probably ends up being the starting slot player this year. I don't know. He's going to get some competition. From uh, who's the cat they drafted in the fifth? Uh, Tahi Tarheeb still out of Maryland, so they're gonna get some competition from him. Uh, Dean Lennard is actually still sticking with this roster. It's gonna be a depth player for them behind Asante Samuel and Christian Fulton. He's probably gonna battle it out for uh, outside corner three with Cam Hart. I mean, now looking back, this class does feel real lackluster. They just got a ton of... Uh, just got a ton of... Mid players, depth players. All right. Who are we moving on to? Uh, B. I gave a B to the Raiders. So they didn't have their first two rounders. I think that's because they acquired Devontae Adams. Uh, but Dylan Parham, he hasn't really broken through yet. Uh, he was kind of bouncing around between left guard, right guard. Uh, still should be the starter for them this year. Let's see if he can really emerge in year three. Zamir White's going to be the starter this year. That was really good down, like late down the stretch uh, for the Raiders. So, uh-oh, watch out. Neil Farrell's done a hot lot of nothing. Matthew Butler hasn't been able to break through. I don't even think Brent Brown's still on the roster. But they're Mumford. They got a solid player there. If they are Mumford, is he going to be their right tackle uh, this season? I think so, because they, they drafted... Uh, they did bring in DJ Glaze, but I don't think you're going to start him right away. But Mumford's all right as, like, a run blocker. So, like, honestly, not that bad of a class. They potentially have two starters on the offensive line. You got a starter at running back. Nothing big, though. So B grade feels fair. Might be borderline C, really. Uh, my Miami Dolphins, fins up, fins up. We never have draft capital, man. I always complain, man. This team never has draft capital. We had 
four picks in this draft. I don't know if any of them are even still on the roster. I legit... Uh, Skylar Tom Thompson's probably still around. Yeah, but I mean, they got Mike White. He's the backup quarterback. Uh, Tyndall, are you still around, Tyndall? He is, but I mean, he he's stuck behind David Lom, Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker. Like, yeah, good luck. Godspeed. As a uh, comma, I, I wasn't a big fan of. Oh, he's still on the roster, though. He was just kind of in that Texas Tech offense, just like big body, can create after the catch, nothing special. Camera good, I don't think he's still on the roster. This was a trash draft by the Dolphins. Trash draft. What happened to our... We lost... Uh, was this the draft we lost uh, our first-round pick? Here, let me, let me listen to what I said about my let's Dolphins. Take this B down. And let's, I'm a Dolphins fan. Uh, straight up, I thought a bit. I thought Eric as a Kuma, uh, Kama is he was a big reach. I thought he was a big reach. I wasn't the biggest fan. Some people really like him. Um, I mean, he fits the scheme. He fits the scheme. I'll give him that. So I don't mind them getting playmakers. I wish they would have took a shot on maybe some of the offensive interior players or any, honestly I've any been, offensive lineman. That were, I've been screaming that for years now. Dolphins get offensive line talent available but they didn't chat uh chan and tindall he's gonna be a great player for that defense like he's a good scheme fit pro easily their best pick uh, lol <laughs> yeah no it was bad it was bad all right we're gonna go to the new england patriots was this the this was the cole strange draft i gave it a d yeah, i mean just look at this draft class it's a d like that's that's just that's just enjoy this draft class for a second. Let's just enjoy this draft class for a second. Cole Strange, he's their starting left guard. Good for them. Cool. Uh, I did like Strange. I just didn't like him that early. Uh, where did I have Cole Strange? I had a third round grade on him. They take him back into the first. Tyquan Thornton. He's been unable to really emerge for this squad. Now he's just stuck. He's probably not going to make the team this year. They still have Marcus Jones. He's hovering around. He's probably going to contend for the starting slot position this year. Uh, I did crap on the Jack Jones pick at the time. Just because I thought he ended up would end up playing uh, being a slot player. He ended up playing good his rookie year, but then found his way out of New England. Which, unfortunately, he, he probably ended up being their best pick here. And now he's going to be a starter for the Raiders. Pierre Strong, he got traded. Kevin Harris is still on the squad. Bailey Zappi, he's he's their backup quarterback. Not even. Not even. They got Jacoby Brissett and they got Drake May. He's their emergency quarterback at best. I don't know if he even makes a roster, unfortunately. What else we got? We uh, what else they got to work with here? Oh, look, I'm still crapping on the roster. Well, uh, Sam Roberts. I don't even think Roberts is still with the Patriots at this juncture. Oh, he's still there. Hello, there you go. He's still around. But, yeah. I, I kind of agree. It's kind of a dog water draft. Looking back, it's a big F now. Uh, Jets. I, I liked their draft a lot. Uh, who did I say had... I, th I said the Chiefs had one of the banger drafts. This one's starting, actually, this one, looking at this one, it's starting to emerge like that. Uh, they didn't have any picks on day three, but it looks like they, they've essentially hit on almost all their picks. Um, Sauce Gardner, one of the best corners in the league. Garrett Wilson, he will be untapped, just wait. Uh, you got Jermaine Johnson, who started to emerge this year. Brees Hall doing the best he can behind that dog water offensive line. Hopefully the offensive line will be a little bit better this season, but... He's flashed. Jeremy Ruckert, more of a backup tight end, but that's fine. Max Mitchell, he's good depth for them. And Michael Clemens has been in on the rotation and been pretty solid. Like, he had a better rookie year than Jermaine Johnson. Yeah, this is like an A+. This is one of the better draft classes right here. Good by the Jets. I mean, when you have three first-round picks and it looks like they're all going to hit, yeah, you're probably feeling good about your draft. You're probably feeling good. So I got a B plus for this next squad, and it's the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. B plus. 
Kenny Pickett. Oh, I just want to go back and I, I want to, I want, I want to, I want to listen to what I had to say about Kenny Pickett. Because so many people hated on me for the Kenny Pickett, uh, not being like in on Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett was quarterback five for me. I had a second round grade on. It's him. Like I, not gonna argue with you. It's it's a good draft. All right, let's let's talk about Kenny Pickett, Pittsburgh Steelers. I gave this draft class a B plus, and let me tell you what weighs down this draft class. It's Kenny Pickett. <laughs> and I know I'm going to get the Kenny Pickett fans, the Kenny Pickett marks, the Kenny Pickett truthers. Or if you weren't, a, you're probably a Pittsburgh fan who wasn't even a Kenny Pickett truther to begin with. But now you are since he's on your team. Listen, Dude. the guys working. With, don't bring me. Oh, Joe Burrow had nine inch hands. Oh, Jared Goff had small hands. Why are you even bringing Jared Goff? You really want him to be an example you point to? Oh, it's like, no. well, those guys had had shots fired at jared goff as he signs an extension <laughs> shots fired at jared goff as he signs his extension just a day or so ago small hands nobody outside of michael vick has started a nfl game in the modern nfl era with eight and a half inch hands if you're if you're coming at me like well burrow no 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 he's a whole a whole freaking half inch smaller like that's substantial in the nfl like don't that's you're bringing a disingenuous argument like that's not an argument you can't pull it to that example we talk about a nine inch threshold joe burrow met it your boy did not you're gonna worry about fumbles when he was handling nfl football at the senior bowl guess what fumbling snaps you'd be like oh that's a, that's disingenuous Oh, the weather was sl was sloppy. Okay, they moved inside. What happened? Whoa, 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 the ball was still coming out wobbly. There was no zip. Arguably, he probably it looked like he had the weakest arm there. And Bailey Zappi was there. No, Bailey Zappi's arm's okay. Look at that dude taking shots at Zappi too. Uh, yeah, no, it ends up being just a bundle of a pick. Uh, this is be I mean. To be fair, I feel like the Steelers have hit home runs the last like two drafts. Like 2023 was really good. 2024, I anticipate to be really good as well. Uh, George Pickens probably ends up being their best pick here. Uh, DeMarvin Leal just can't really like he's in the rotation, but it looks like he's probably not going to be a guy they bring back. Uh, Calvin Austin's really just a gadget player. Connor Hayward, he's actually had a nice little role with the squad. But yeah, this 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 was a bad draft class for the Steelers. Let's move on. Let's move on to the Tennessee Titans. Oh, this wraps up the video. This wraps up the video. Let's hear what I have to team say. here. Uh, and I actually gave them a B plus. And I feel like I feel like this is very what's the word? Generous, I was borderline B with this because I uh, straight up. How are you going to trade away AJ Brown for for the same price as a Marquise Hayes or Marquise Brown? Uh, I think that's actually probably more on. Yeah. Thank you, wife. Oh man. So, yeah, obviously the A.J. Brown pick was, or the A.J. Brown trade was dumb. This kind of started to mark the end of the Vrabel era and felt like the Ryan started to be on the wall. Roger McCree has been solid. I think I slotted him, <laughs> slotted him, uh, as like a slot player in the NFL, and that's kind of what he has now become, which is fine. He, I think he's been solid. He was solid in that role last year. Uh, who, who are their starting outside corners? Oh, that's right. They traded for Le I keep forgetting. Legere Sneeds a tight end now. But they also brought in uh, Chidobe Awuzie. So you're going to get him a career in the slot. And I think that's fine. Uh, he's going to battle it out with uh, Brownlee, who I actually like quite a bit, who they drafted in the fifth this year. Nicholas petit Frere. Fortunately... Can't hold down a starting role. I don't think he's going to be a starter this year for the Titans. I think Dylan Radins just was a better run blocker. 
And I think that's going to get, the, he's going to edge out Nicholas Petit Frere. Malik Willis. It's now very air apparent and obvious why he fell. And he just, uh, so much so, I mean, they drafted Will Levis last year. Hassan Haskins, I absolutely hated. I could crap on that pick all day. I thought it was bad. Uh, he was running back 24 for me. I had a seventh round grade on him. They took him in the fourth. Called it. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I do like uh, a Conquo. I'm kind of hoping he gets a little bit more work in the receiving game this year. Uh, Kyle Phillips, unfortunately, not healthy. But he's shown some flashes. I don't think we've seen much from Chance Campbell or Theo Jackson. Uh, I don't even think Campbell, Campbell's still hanging around with the squad. Theo Jackson is not. But those are six-round picks. So you kind of care a little bit less about that. But... Like th this all you you gotta talk about this this draft with trading AJ Brown. You trade AJ Brown for essentially what? Burks and I think it's Nicholas Petit Frere was the what they ended up acquiring. Not good, not great. Even if it was Malik Willis, not good, not great, not even average. This feels bad. This 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 draft was literally a sign of the end times for Mike Vrabel. So yeah, I I said it in this. I think I'm being generous with this grade. Yeah, now looking back, not a great draft. Not a great draft, unfortunately. But let me know what you think of some of these draft classes. Did your team do well? Did they not? I don't know. You let me know. You let me know uh, if you think any of my opinions suck. If you want to look ahead to the 2025 NFL Draft class, I've already put out my summer rankings for the quarterback and the defensive tackle class. So you can check out those videos right down here. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.